Hello. Hi guys. Let me know if you can see and hear me. Hi. Wow. Lighting's kind of weird. What's going on? <laughs> Hello. Comment if you can see and hear me. Let me know. Hi. Okay, perfect. I can see your comments. Hi, guys. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm pulling up the comments on here. Hi from Vietnam. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I want to go to Vietnam so badly. Oh, thank you, Jujaya. <laughs> thank you, Melina. New York City. Hi, Elena. North Carolina, Canada, Maryland, Iceland, whoa. I wonder what time it is in Iceland. India, oh whoa, what time is it in India? I feel like it's really late at night there. Pakistan, oh, I wanna to go to Pakistan so badly, you have no idea, that's so cool. Wisconsin, Texas, London, Spain. This is so cool, Poland. I love seeing where you guys are tuning in from, it's literally so much fun. It's literally so much fun, wow, I sound basic. South Africa, I almost moved to South Africa. I was so close. Maybe I will in the future, who knows. Orlando, South England, Egypt. I was just in Egypt a few months ago. It was so, so cool, I miss it so much. Philippines, Italy, hey guys, Dubai, wow. Hi everyone. Okay, let's just get into it so I can answer as many of your skincare questions as possible. If you are new to this live stream series, I do live streams every single week during quarantine to help keep you guys company and answer some of your questions that I may not be able to answer um, in videos or just have a connection with you guys, see your comments. Also answer random questions. If you guys have random questions, let me know. I'm open to answering them as well, but I know most of them are about skincare. But as we get into this, I want to say I'm not a licensed student esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever, ever, ever claim to be or know more than either of them. This live stream is not intended as a diagnosis at all. If you do have any concerns with your skin, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated, as we all know. <laughs> um, this is all just for fun and information's sake, just to help you guys out. Feel free to get a second opinion. It's always good to get a second opinion. This is just to help you guys out and connect with you guys. So let's just get into the questions. Also, if you want to connect with me more, um, go follow me on TikTok, Skincare by Hiram. Oh my gosh, I have to say, before we start this video, TikTok is insane. So, day before yesterday, no, three days ago, I woke up with 850,000 followers on TikTok. Very happy about that. You guys are freaking awesome. Uh, two days later, 1.5 million. I don't even know what happened. Like, my mind was literally just blowing up. Literally in the space of hours, I was getting hundreds of thousands of new followers. It's, it's just crazy. You guys are amazing. So thank you to everyone on TikTok who's been supporting me. And if you found me via TikTok and you're now here on YouTube, welcome to the YouTube fam. This is usually where I'm most active, but I'm trying to be more active on TikTok. So you can go follow me there. Just search my name, Hiram. I should hopefully come up. <laughs> All right, let's start answering these questions. Hello Hiram, <laughs> how long should you leave Paul's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliate and niacinamide on before taking the next product? Love from Sweden. Oh hi, from Sweden, that's awesome. So um, I would say with Paul's Choice um, or any salicylic acid product, I always recommend putting it on immediately after cleansing your skin um, and then also always waiting for it to dry and then applying ni niacinamide on after it has completely dried because sometimes niacinamide and Paul's Choice or just any um, salicylic acid product don't really mix well together so you want to make sure they're fully absorbed before going in with the next product um but i would just say for any skincare product waiting a good minute to two minutes before applying the next one is always a good idea i tend to do little things in between each of my steps so whether it's like my hair or brushing my teeth or anything like that um, i tend to do it in between my skincare routine that way i have time for all the products to properly absorb let's see Hey Hiram, love your vibe and energy. Thank you. I was hoping how to 
um, I was hoping to get any tips of red acne scars. Yeah, so I actually have a video talking about how to get rid of acne scars. Um, the red ones are called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or PIH. And um, those are really tricky to get rid of, but I'd say the best thing that I recommend for starting is niacinamide, so a niacinamide serum. Um, a lot of you guys have been saying that the ordinary niacinamide is sold out, and now the Inkeyless niacinamide is selling out. So, uh, oh my gosh, I don't have it right here next to me. Shoot, oh well, I usually like to hold it up. Um, the Naturium niacinamide serum is awesome. I've been loving that one so much recently, I did not expect to like it, because everyone was talking about how much they like Naturium, and I'm like, I want to be different. <laughs> but no, it's actually so good. It absorbs into the skin really nicely. It's more expensive, but it's a very high quality product. I definitely recommend that one. So a niacinamide, because that will help to fade the darkness and get rid of the redness, but if that starts not work, then I would say going in with like a vitamin C or a retinol, definitely a good way to go. Carl says, hi Hiram, what's a good way to get rid of acne on my neck, back, and chest? My neck, my back, sorry. <laughs> it's probably not appropriate for this question, but it just triggered that response. <laughs> it's really bad. What are some body washes that help too? Yeah, so, um, you know, body washes, for acne, I usually don't recommend body washes. The reason why is because they tend to be very, very, very harsh. And with body acne, I just think you can go in with a good salicylic acid cleanser. Um, so you can use the one from CeraVe which I don't have by me. <laughs> oh wait, yes I do. These two, either the Inculus salicylic acid or the CRV salicylic acid cleanser, those are both awesome to start on your body. And then if those don't work, then you can move up to more harsh treatments. Um, but typically a, a lot of body cleansers for acne tend to be a little bit overly stripping, but I just say it really depends. Just look for anything with salicylic acid. Um, that's definitely my recommendation for body acne. Are there any products to minimize the appearance of sebaceous filaments? Yes. So um, salicylic acid, because what salicylic acid does is it decreases oil production within the skin and also helps to exfoliate all of the excess oil and sebum and dirt in your pores, which is essentially what those sebaceous filaments are. So by decreasing the oil production, you're gonna see less of those sebaceous filaments. Also niacinamide, because it helps to control the oiliness um, in your skin. Those two products I love because I personally think they're the best combination for sebaceous filaments. And if you're still experiencing sebaceous filaments after that, it may be because you're overly stripping your skin. You may have more dry skin than you expected, so you might want to go in with like a better moisturizer or a treatment more focused for dry skin because that could help your skin panicking trying to create all this oil because it is so dry. Melissa says, can you make a review about Monat skincare, please? Love your videos. They've helped me a lot. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Yeah, so you know, Monat... I've been struggling to make videos about um, Monat, Mary Kay, those type, because I don't want to cause a lot of drama. And while right now it is a time where a lot of people are turning to MLM skincare companies for revenue because it's quarantine, you know, people are becoming more and more desperate, which is very sad. I feel really bad about making a video because I'll be completely honest, don't like Monat, don't like Mary Kay, don't like any company that uses people as leverage to sell their products and make the people at the top a lot of money. I don't want to say pyramid scheme, but it has a lot of symptoms of that. So I'm just personally not a fan. Um, that's why I recommend just normal skincare products. Um, and I want to make a video about it, but I also feel bad just like calling it out in the middle of quarantine when people I know are turning to that as a resource. But let me know if you guys still think I should move forward with it because I do want to be sensitive to how people are trying to make money right now. Do you have any recommendations for fragrance-free gel moisturizers? Maybe a video of fragrance-free gel creams, water creams. Oh, that's a great, that's a great um, suggestion. I, I haven't even thought of doing a water cream video, but yeah, I mean, plenty of them. Uh, the one behind me, Centella Calming Gel Cream. This one does have one essential oil, but it's, I can't smell it at all, and it's so low on the ingredient list. Um, so I personally recommend this one. This gel cream is awesome. Another gel cream, I'm trying to think. Fragrance free gel. Oh yeah, um, First Aid Beauty Coconut Water Cream. Obsessed this with this one. It smells like it has fragrance, but it's actually just the coconut water that they use. This one is one of my favorite water creams of all time. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys do want that video. I'm happy to make it. 
I know you don't like putting coffee scrub on the face, but what do you think about putting it on your body? The brand Frank Body makes scrubs for that. You know, just coffee scrubs in general, I just don't recommend it. If you do want to use a scrub for the body, there are great sugar scrubs um, out there for that. And it, it depends on the product. It really just depends on how harsh it is. I mean, if it's a really, really fine, like there are some pumice um, scrubs that I love for the body because they're super fine, um, not like irritating or overly harsh at all. But um, coffee scrubs more often than not tend to be really, really, really harsh. And I would just recommend a sugar one instead because sugar can break down with water. But the body is more resilient, so it's not as disastrous as it is as using it on the face. Let's see. Hey from Norway, sometimes you say uh, oil is good, sometimes bad, so I don't get it. Where does it, where do essential oils come in the picture? Yeah, so that is so tricky. I wish there was an easy like, oh, it's this is this type is good, this type is bad, but it really does come down to every single individual oil. Every oil could be different. And that's why I just recommend avoiding essential oils altogether um, because then you don't have to worry about the complexities of finding out whether this oil is good and whether this oil is bad. And with essential oils, it all depends on the concentration as well. Some at high concentrations are fine, some at low concentrations are really irritating. And when you're reading an ingredient list, you don't know the concentration of that essential oil, so it's constantly a risk. And that's why I don't recommend essential oils. Like, do I think a lot of essential oils are horrific, bad for the skin? No, not necessarily, but they're not necessary. And the risk that you associate with not knowing the percentage and concentration that they're at in a product is the reason why I'm so turned off to it in general. So that's why, I can't provide like an easy answer and that's my frustration with essential oils because there is no easy answer. It's so complex and it just completely depends. So I just recommend avoiding them altogether. The only type of essential oils that I'm okay with, I would say are like tea tree oil, chamomile oil. Yeah. <laughs> Those are all the only like fragrant essential oils, but there's other oils out there like rosehip oil and stuff like that that are amazing. But unfortunately, there's just no easy answer. Every single oil is different. It's very complex. Um, I try to make it as easy as possible to understand on my channel, but it's 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 a struggle. It's very difficult. Gall says, hi, Hiram. Thanks for this live. How should I treat my stubble area? What products should I apply in this area and ones, what ones should I avoid? Yeah, so I guess it just depends on your struggle. Like I personally struggle with a lot of razor burn um, and I've seen definite improvements in my skin with uh, niacinamide and then when I am breaking out salicylic acid, but also just any soothing creams in that area and very hydrating creams are very beneficial. Um, I would say for stubble, you want to make sure that that area is moisturized because typically with a lot of shaving creams in the process of shaving, it can be a little bit stripping and it's always good to moisturize. And some people tend to neglect where there is stubble because they're just like, oh, like, or if there is a beard, they're like, oh, I don't need to moisturize that area of the face. And it's like, no, you still should. Um, so I just recommending follow up with a good moisturizer. If you do struggle with um, you know, any razor burn, I highly recommend watching my video about shaving and razor burn because I give a bunch of my recommendations there. Oops. Hi, Hiram. What are your thoughts on Murad? I think Murad's good. Um, do I think it's the best brand in the world? No. Do I think it's the worst? No. Um, I, it's like a fine brand for me. I tend to find that their products are pretty expensive though. That's the only thing I don't like about them. Some of them are good, but some of like their serums are like 75 to hundred dollars, which is definitely really pricey. But overall, I don't have a problem with the brand. I think they're a good brand. If you want to treat something in your skin, they're good. But if you're looking for a really cheap alternative, I mean, The Ordinary is very similar in philosophy to Murad. So that's why I usually recommend The Ordinary. What's your opinion on the Aztec clay mask? Um, so Aztec clay mask, you know, it, it's not, bad, but it tends to be just so overly stripping to your skin. I will not deny that it does amazing things for your skin, but it's one of those like, you guys know that I just don't like singular ingredients as skincare products. I believe the beauty of skincare is mixing a bunch of different beneficial ingredients into this amazing formula that can really help treat a bunch of different issues on your skin. When you go in with 100% concentration of one single ingredient, at most you are only getting the benefits of that one ingredient. and. With the clay mask, that's essentially what it is. I would personally prefer a clay mask that has a bunch of hydrating, moisturizing agents, brightening agents, all in one, so I'm not, so my skin's not gonna be overly stripped. Um, I'm gonna be getting so many benefits, um, but I don't think it's bad. You just wanna make sure that you really moisturize afterwards because that mask dries out your skin faster than the Sahara Desert Oil Girl. It's intense. 
Gabby said, hi, I was wondering what your opinion on Proactive is. You know, Proactive is one of those brands, like, I do think they used to be a lot worse than they are now because I know people who have horrific scarring from the previous Proactive products. Now they have some better formulas, but overall, I just don't think they're worth it. I don't think they're a brand that really deserves a lot of support um, because at best, they're just okay at best, but most of their products I really don't like. So not a fan of Proactive, but I will be making a video at some point in the future about that when I manage to find time, <laughs> I will make a video about that. Hi Hiram, with your recommended Paula's Choice BHA, do you use it and then put a serum over it or do you put just put a moisturizer over it? You know, it depends on your personal preference for skincare. Um, you know, I like to keep my routines really simple, so I will only use like one treatment product. I don't use multiple serums. So when I do use the Paul's Choice 2% BHA, I just use that and then I follow up with the moisturizer afterwards. But if you are wanting to use a serum that's like hydrating or moisturizing or calming, I think that's fine. Um, but if it's another exfoliating serum, definitely don't go in with it. Um, unless you're very, you know, unless you really do your research to figure out like if it's a low percentage or effective or whatever. Um, I just usually don't recommend mixing a lot of treatments together but if it's just like a hydrating serum or something like that yeah it's totally fine Luke says loving your channel on YouTube thank you what is your opinion about snail mucin and skincare could you do a review on Cosrx X products thanks a bunch thank you so I actually have done a video review about some Cosrx X products the snail mucin serum from them is my favorite or the essence whatever um, it's like a essence serum because it's very thick it is amazing so good if you have dry skin I highly recommend I actually love the ingredient snail mucin and um, I used to be a little like potentially turned off to it because I was like how do they source it and are they hurting snails but in reality they have to keep the snails really healthy in order to produce the snail mucin um, and yeah I just love I love snail mucin I think it has so many benefits for the skin I understand that it's a little weird but I don't care because glowing skin is the goal honey <laughs> So yeah, I I think it's great. I highly recommend it to people. Hey Hiram, the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics has helped my skin hydration blackheads. Can you recommend similar products? Love your positivity. Thank you. So, you know, the Marine Hyaluronics, but the Ordinary, I love the ingredient list. I have yet to try the product because usually in terms of hyaluronic acid serums, hydrating serums, moisturizing serums, that's not usually my thing because I have very combination to oily skin and we're also entering summer so that's the last thing I need right now <laughs> but um but the ingredient list is so good as far as similar products to that one it's hard because that one is such a proprietary blend of so many different like hydrating agents I would say the Vichy hydrating serum that one's bomb that one's really good um I'm gonna have to get back on you on that one because that one is kind of a unique product that I'm not super familiar with alternatives to. Stephanie says, hi Hiram, I have the Inculus Q10 serum and niacinamide. Which, would you recommend I use them both in the morning, night, or each one at different times? So you can use those together. Niacinamide is great for reducing sensitivity, redness, it's a brightening agent. Um, it helps with a lot of things, but Q10 is just for antioxidant protection. So it helps to protect your skin from damage inflicted by pollution, sunlight, and a bunch of other factors during the day. So they're totally fine to use together. Um, if anything, I recommend using niacinamide both day and night and then using the Q10 during the day because I don't think the Q10 is necessary at night because during the night you're not experiencing a lot of antioxidant damage because you're just in your bed. You know, um, But niacinamide can definitely be used at both times during the day. Gianna says, hey from Canada, hi. Anything for redness in the cheeks? P.S. You're awesome. My skin thanks you. Oh, thank you. Um, so again, nice and mighty. I love that because it reduces redness and irritation. Um, my favorite natural extracts are like Centella Asiatica or green tea. Um, oat extract, oat powder. Um, those ingredients are great for reducing redness in the skin. Um, I would say... As far as products go, actually, go watch my pro my video about products for sensitive skin. Um, I make recommendations there. There's a lot of good ones. Um, and I talk about my favorite ingredients and which products have those ingredients for reducing redness in the skin. But overall, I like to say niacinamide just because that's, in my opinion, one of the best. What are your top five favorite cleansing balms or oils? Ooh, 
five is a lot. I don't think I have time to go through though that many, but I'd say my favorite cleansing balm right now is the Then I Met You Mango Cleansing Balm. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's polyethylene free. It does have fragrance, but I don't mind fragrance in a cleansing balm because it's a wash off treatment. It's so buttery smooth. It's just, oh, it's expensive, but it's so good. <laughs> it's so good in one of those where I'm like, wow, I'm willing to make that investment um, as I've purchased it in the past. Let's see. Roxy says, I need a budget skincare routine for mature skin. I'm 38 with wrinkles, fine lines, and loose skins. Can you give me some recommendations? Ooh, so I don't have time to make a whole skincare routine for you, but I would say go in with a retinol product. Retinol is the best ingredient for re repairing damage, wrinkles, fine lines, dark spots, literally like any type of damage in your skin. That's what retinol treats. I personally love, okay, so a couple different ones I've been loving. If you want a starter one, the Paula's Choice 0.3% retinol and 2% Pacuchiol. Amazing, very gentle, very good. Also, the Inky List Q10, nope, <laughs> not Q10, retinol serum is really good as well if you're wanting something more affordable. If you also are wanting other like affordable um, product recommendations, go to my skincare under $10 video because I go through a bunch of recommendations there. But I'd say just any skincare routine that's very hydrating and has retinol definitely want to focus on retinol. Any tips for battling keratosis pilaris? The only product I found is the first day BDKP scrub. Also, I love you. Thank you for saving my skin. Of course, Celeste. Thank you. Um, so KP, it's difficult. If you mean KP on the body, on the body, yes. Any um, pumice-based scrub I think is good. Um, a really intense one is the first day beauty one. That one's awesome. If you want a more gentle one, I love the, um, what's it called? Necessaire body exfoliant. That one is awesome because it's all, also a pumice based scrub. Um, very high quality, very good. Um, and then, but if you're talking about for the face, I'm nervous about recommending products for the face because that is like a specific, like dermatology type of issue where I would recommend you go, you'd go to a dermatologist because I'm nervous about recommending something for your skin when it has that severe of an issue. Cause that's more so than just like, how do I exfoliate? You know, that is a more intense issue that I would want you to be, you know, more careful with your skin about. Sorry, I have to adjust that. Let's see. Hey Hiram, I use the Ordinary Niacinamide Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday and the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Toner Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Is this too much? No, it's totally fine. I love that you're splitting up your treatments. Technically, you can use niacinamide every day if you wanted to. I think it's an ingredient that should be used every day. Um, and the Watermelon Glow PHA Toner um, is, is very gentle. It's not too harsh at all. Um, I would say, yeah, three times a week at most for that one. It's great. Good routine. Ah, sorry, my phone's freezing up. Too many comments. <laughs> Is it feasible to buy a cleanser with botanical or special ingredients even though it doesn't stay on your face for too long and eventually gets washed down the drain? Yeah, I think so. Um, by botanical, I'm assuming you mean like essential oils and stuff like that. I am fine with fragrance in a cleanser because it is only on your face for like 30 seconds unless the essential oils are listed so high on the ingredient list, like crazy high concentrations and the smell is extremely strong then I would recommend avoiding that because you just don't want to risk it and that's just not a good formula. But my favorite cleanser of all time, the YouTube People Cleanser has fragrance in it. Um, and I think it's great, you know? So yeah, in a cleanser, I totally think it's fine. The only time I get nervous about fragrance is when you're using a lot of products and they're just building and building and building in the fragrance used for them. That's where I get a little bit like, eh, nervous about that. Let's see. Janita says, love you. How do you keep the um, dark circles? How do you keep away the dark circles and hollow eye look? Your eyes always look so perfect and I see no dark circles under your eyes. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's funny. I have a specific issue with that. Um, and I've considered getting, <laughs> so, um, in direct light and um, just whenever there's any like good lighting on my face like I don't look I thankfully don't have dark circles but if you guys notice I have lines right here it's just genetic they're not dark circles they're just lines and so when the light is above me it looks like I have dark circles even though I don't and I've considered getting like filler I know <laughs> I'm turning into a youtuber that just gets so much work done no I'm kidding <laughs> and no disrespect to anyone who does get work done that is your prerogative you you want to look like that good for you uh, but I have considered kind of getting that because I'm just like oh I'm crazy tired of looking like I have dark circles but thankfully in normal lighting I don't look like I have them um so 
When it comes to dark circles, I recommend niacinamide. Um, so the CRV Eye Repair Cream um, is a great one because niacinamide repairs darkness, um, it brightens um, the under eye area, but I also recommend retinol. But it also depends on your personal skin type. Like, um, if you are someone, you know, who has always kind of had dark circles, there's not a lot you can do. If you are someone like me who has these lines that make you look like you have dark circles, if you're someone who, you know, as you've gotten older, you see the skin kind of like puff up under there, that is something that you would want to get treated, whether it be filler, whether it be, you know, some type of surgery, that would be the option for that. But if you, you are noticing that you're just getting darkness because you know, you haven't been sleeping as much or um, stress or something like that. First of all, get sleep, don't stress. <laughs> but second of all, um, you wanna make sure that you're, you know, going in with a good eye cream. So it just really depends on your under eye area and what your skin is like, because it's different for everyone. And the reason why I shared like, I have that because some people have been like, oh, like, you know, do you have dark circles or, um, you know, what do you do to get rid of those? And I'm like, well, sometimes it depends, you know? And it really just, Sometimes treatments is best, sometimes eye cream is best. It just depends on your skin. What is your opinion on Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream? It's good on my skin, but I'm not sure about long term. So that was one of the few products from Kiehl's that I think is fine. I think it's good. Um, if you watch my Truth About Kiehl's video, I talk about the, that product in detail. Um, I don't think it's the best, but if it works for your skin, then that's great. I don't think it has any really irritating ingredients or sensitizing ingredients. So if you love it, keep going forward with it. Hey Hiram, what is your opinion on moisturizers with SPF in them? Would you recommend using a sunscreen over? Yeah, so I typically don't like moisturizers with SPF um, because in terms of how much moisturizer I use, I will use like maybe two pea size amount of a moisturizer um, because when you're using serums and moisturizer and a sunscreen on top of that, they all have moisturizing agents. So you don't need to use a ton of moisturizer, but sunscreen, I use so much sunscreen <laughs> every day. Like I will use like, you see like, boom, like, like that much sunscreen because sunscreen is the most important part of your skincare routine. And the SPF rating, whether it be SPF 30 or 50, is usually based off of like a tablespoon worth of sunscreen. So we're actually putting a lot less sunscreen than we think we are on our face. So the reason I don't like moisturizers with SPF in them is because typically I don't use very much moisturizer. I don't want a ton of moisturizer that makes me look really greasy. But if I only use a tiny bit, I'm not getting the full amount of sunscreen protection that I want, you know, and realistically, you'd have to do a ton of moisturizer in order to get that sunscreen protection. So that's why I like customizing it. I like going in with a very lightweight moisturizer and then afterwards going in with a very lightweight sunscreen and I use a ton of it to get as much protection as I can. And that's usually why I don't recommend moisturizers with sunscreens in them. Also, most moisturizers with sunscreens in them have chemical um, filters um, or inorganic filters um and i'm just not really a fan of those um so i just yeah i would just recommend going in with a separate sunscreen let's see um what kind of non-sticky non-comedic non-comedogenic occlusive do you recommend to use with Tret? I've been using a teeny amount of Vaseline, but I've heard it doesn't let your skin breathe. So that is a myth um, regarding Vas Vaseline, um, but it does depend on people's skin. Like some people have bad reactions to anything. Anyone's skin can react negatively to anything, but um, I would say because you have prescription tretinoin, um, ask your dermatologist because they know your skin way better than me and they're gonna be able to provide you with way better recommendations. And I don't wanna say anything that could coincide or clash with um with what they're saying and for anyone who is watching who does have access to a dermatologist use them for all they're worth <laughs> ask as many questions as you can to your dermatologist because they're the best resource to have let's see what about jojoba oil as a facial oil um you know facial oils i'm just not a fan of because i just don't understand i don't understand bitch don't understand <laughs> I just I just don't get the purpose behind them I'm like you know yeah you can use a hundred percent concentration of a single oil and I love jojoba oil I think it's amazing but why not use it in a good concentration in a moisturizer that's not going to leave you overly greasy and you know it's still going to give you that jojoba those jojoba oil benefits but also a bunch of other benefits as well um you know facial oils i think are fine if you have really dry skin and you've seen good results with a facial oil that's great but most facial oils i know of 
pack a lot of fragrance and essential oils in them and they're just really not necessary to a routine um but if you are someone who has insanely sensitive skin like your skin is reacting to literally everything you put on it and the only thing that is working is say like 100 percent jojoba oil or something like that hell yeah go after it like find what works for your skin but would i recommend it in general no i would just recommend moisturizers that have a good like a percentage of jojoba oil so many comments i love all your guys' questions Let's see, um, what order do you apply your products? Um, you know, so I always just recommend first cleansing, second treatment, third moisturizing, fourth sunscreen. Apply in that order. When it comes to like which serum should you apply first, which moisturizer, which facial oil, you know, it, it really isn't as important as I think people make it out to be. Like people tend to be like, it is so important that you have to go in this set of, in this set order and you can't do this before this, this, this. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you do your sunscreen last. I personally like going in an order of like doing the lightweight serums first and then following up with the heavier products afterwards because I feel like that looks best on my skin, but it just does depend on your skin. The most important thing is always finishing with the sunscreen. Always make sure that's your last step. Let's see. Do skincare products have a shelf life? Like, do they expire after a while? Yes, they do. Let me show you something. Um, oh, it's not on that. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to find a product. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see on the back of this, there's a little symbol. Oh, it will not focus. There's a little symbol. It looks like a jar and it has a number and a letter and it usually would be like 12M or 24M. That's the amount of months that it will be like, um, that it won't expire um, after opening. So say, you know, I waited six months to start using this. I open it, I then have, cause this says 12 M. So I have 12 months after I open it to use it before it expires. So that's a good way of being able to tell how quickly a product expires. Um, I think usually the minimum that products are at is six months. If it's any less than six months, I just don't recommend using that product because that's way too risky. It can go bad really easily. Um, but yeah, that's how you can tell. You learn something new every day. <laughs> What's your opinion on Curology? I love Curology. I think they're great. I love what they're doing. Um, initially, I was a little bit turned off by them because their uh, advertising strategy was so aggressive and all my ads 24 seven were Curology and I was just like, oh, enough. But I, I think they're a great company. I really like what they're doing. Hi, hi, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. I have combination skin and I was wondering what products you recommend on a, bu on a budget. Love your videos, by the way. Thank you. So I recommend um, watch my videos about The Ordinary, The Inky List, um, CeraVe. I watch my video about budget skincare because um, I wish I had time to like make a routine for you, but it really just depends on your personal skincare concerns. Um, so I recommend watching those videos because you'll be able to figure out like what products I recommend and what skin types they're for because I always tell you guys like which skin type I recommend um, certain products for. But they're all really good price points. Let's see. Hi, Hiram. I love you so much. You're so positive and sweet. Thank you, Fiona. Solution for uneven skin tone and rosacea. Have an amazing day. You deserve it. Thank you. So uneven skin tone and rosacea, highly recommend niacinamide because niacinamide will do, reduce that redness and sensitivity. It's going to control oiliness, which sometimes is a concern for people with rosacea. And um, it's going to uh, even out your skin tone. So I highly recommend that ingredient and it's well tolerated by pretty much all skin types, even if you have really sensitive skin, because that's kind of what it's aimed for. So I highly recommend that. The Naturium Niacinamide 12% Serum, Amaze Balls, super good. And one of the only Niacinamide serums that's still in stock, because <laughs> like everything's out of stock. Let's see. My skin has become my biggest insecurity, especially since becoming a mom. You've helped my skin so much. I got the honest hydrogel because of you. Holy hell, game changer. You are such a beautiful human. Thank you so much, Amanda. That is amazing. Honestly, I was so impressed by the ingredient list of the honest beauty products, but I don't know if you guys saw my video that went up yesterday. I was reacting to your guys' skincare transformations and hearing your guys' stories of how much like I or other people have been able to help your you know skin improve just makes me so freaking happy. Like literally that whole video was just like the most positive energy video ever because it was so cool seeing you guys 
your guys' stories and your guys' faces. So thank you so much for that, Amanda. I, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you found a product that really works well for your skin. Ah, there's so many comments. It's, it keeps like freezing up. What do you recommend for acne scars? Keep doing what you do. Thank you, Adriana. Um, go watch my video about acne scars because that's one of those things like there's different types of acne scars. There's so many different treatments you can use. I recommend watching that video because I go into detail there. Love you and your channel. Will you be making a video reviewing Paula's Choice? I've been using the Paula's Choice Pore Reducing Toner with Niacinamide and the Retinol with Bacuchiol. Thoughts? Retinol with Bacuchiol. That's the one I just recommended. Love it. Love it. Um, Paula's Choice, incredible brand from a um, skincare philosophy standpoint. There's some things I'm not like crazy about by them, but overall I love the brand. I think it's so good. I am working on trying a bunch of their products because um, when I do a Paula's Choice video, I want it to be really, really, really intense. Like go in and they have so many products to try. Like it's insane. So I'm slowly making my way through them, but I will be doing a video soon. Yes. What is your favorite hyaluronic acid serum? Ooh. I'm not one for hyaluronic acid serums usually, but I really like the Vichy one. That one just feels so nice and it really plumps up the skin. There's another one and I can't think of it. Shoot. What was the other one? I forgot. I'll say it in an upcoming video. Sorry, I completely forgot. There's another hyaluronic acid serum that I really love and I can't remember what it is. I'm like, where is it? Oh, the Inky List one is good. The Inky List one is definitely good as well. Is the sauna good or bad for the skin? Um, overall, I mean, I've heard dermatologists say that sauna is good for the skin, but uh, it does depend on your skin type. It does depend on what you struggle with. I know sometimes my skin got really irritated from the sauna, and I think it's just because my skin doesn't like being in like super excessive heat like that. I, I don't know. My body gets really stressed out. Um, but overall, I mean, I've heard that it's good for the skin um, from dermatologists before. What are your thoughts on I Do Care? Go watch my video about it. I did a video on TikTok. I did a video on YouTube about I Do Care going into a lot of their popular products. Overall, just not impressed. They're cute, but just not impressed. Does the ordinary niacinamide unclog pores? No, it doesn't. It reduces oiliness, but it doesn't unclog pores. That's where you need an exfoliating ingredient like salicylic acid or AHAs like glycolic acid or lactic acid. That's why I constantly recommend the Paul's Choice 2% BHA because that product will unclog your pores, but not niacinamide. niacinamide. What one product is a must have for the over 50? Ooh, so retinol just in general is a must have if you are over 50. It depends on the retinol. I'm still honestly working and trying to find like what the best retinol product is because I still haven't found one where I'm like, wow, this is perfecto, you know? Um, <laughs> I'm still working through them, but I do like the Paula's Choice retinols. Um, I do like those. I like the Inky List retinol as a starter retinol, but when you're over 50, you want something really strong. Um, but yeah, just look for that ingredient and then start experimenting with your skin and see which one your skin likes the most. So many comments, you guys are awesome. Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Kanani. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. I really appreciate the support, thank you. Opinion on jade rollers. I think they're good. I think they're fine, that they help to depuff the face. They're definitely like, a you know, very spa-like therapeutic experience, but are they the secret to anti-aging? No, and don't let people make you pay like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for um, for that. I just, I don't really agree with that, but they're for just like a jade roller. There are some facial like devices that I definitely think are good and um, can be expensive, but really good for the skin. Um, but jade rollers, I'm just like, you, you shouldn't be spending a lot of money on jade rollers because they're very, they're very simple in concept. Uh, let's see. Hey Hiram, SPF suggestions for someone who has allergic reactions to most sunscreens. Go watch my video about the best sun face sunscreens for this summer because I go into detail there about specific sunscreens that are like the best for the most sensitive skin. But most of the sunscreens I recommend there are really good for sensitive skin. Do I like Foreo? Yes, I do. I love Foreo. Um, are they necessary? No, but are they nice to use? Absolutely. I think Foreo is a great company. 
Thoughts on Kinship. I love Kinship. I think they're a great company. I love what they're doing where they collect ocean plastic and make it into like the packaging of their products. And I love the formulas of so many of their products. I think they're a great small brand. They're like one of those small brands that you find there uh, that you're like, ooh, I want to support you because I like your philosophy. Definitely. Oh, thank you. Let D down. I appreciate it. Any cheap retinol product recommendations? Yes, the Inkey List Retinol uh, and the Ordinary Retinols. Very cheap, but very effective. I'd say the Ordinary ones are pretty strong. Um, the Inkey List one is very gentle, in my experience. That's what I found. Uh, I need to know, is fragrance-free witch hazel toner okay? I use it every day. You know, witch hazel is just one of those ingredients I don't like. I, find, I think it can be overly stripping to the skin, sensitizing. It's basically like a low concentration alcohol. And I'm like, why do you want to be rubbing alcohol over your face? Like, why? Why, why? You know, so I don't recommend witch hazel. I personally think a better alternative is niacinamide because that's going to reduce your oiliness without overly stripping your skin. Let's see. But you know, if witch hazel has completely like changed your life, like it was the one thing that improved your skin, then stick with it, because obviously your skin likes it. Let's see. Is it okay to use lip scrubs? I think it's okay, just be gentle. The lip is a sensitive area on the face, but you know, dead skin can really build up on your lip area, so. I think it's I think it's fine. Okay, for some reason like my phone is not working with the chat or something. I'm trying to figure it out. Let me try to open it up on my computer because it's not sh it's like barely moving on my phone. So let me try this. Uno momento. Let's see. Sorry guys. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I can see more. <laughs> um, can you suggest good serums for oily skin? Definitely, um, Notorium Niacinamide Serum is great. It's very lightweight on the skin. Um, the iUnique Tea Tree Relief Serum, so good for oily and breakout skin. It's super lightweight. Um, what else? Hmm, Inculus Q10 Serum, definitely good as well. For oily skin. I think those are the ones I can think of right now. Thanks for helping cure my cystic acne and cheers to being a fellow eating disorder survivor. Hey, thank you, Noir. Congratulations on getting through that. It is a tough, tough, tough road that I barely got through, so I commend anyone who's able to get through that. Good for you. Awesome. Ashley says, hi, Hiram, you're the best. Literally obsessed with your channel. Thank you, Ashley. Um, can we talk about BHA purging? When does it start and when does it end generally? How do I tell if it's breakout? Yes, so purging is the process um, by which our skin is essentially kind of ridding itself of its, and I hate this word, but toxins, um, you know, built up dead skin over time, dirt. Purging usually only occurs when you're starting exfoliation for the first time or, you know, starting a new type of ingredient. If you are experiencing purging, after just switching to a new salicylic acid product and you've used salicylic acid for a long time, I would say that's an allergic reaction. That is not purging. Um, but purging typically lasts for a week at most. Um, some people say two weeks, but honestly, I'm like, if you're break, unless your breakouts normally usually like end, like last a long time, then maybe two weeks, but you shouldn't be experiencing active breakouts over two weeks. I would say that's gonna be an allergic reaction or sensitivity. So that's kind of how you would know. What is your opinion on Bare Republic Mineral Face Sunscreen? I am waiting until quarantine is up so I can go out and find where they sell it <laughs> um, and get it because I really want to try that sunscreen and I'm actually waiting to try that one before I film a certain video about sunscreens. Kirsten says, I'm planning to move to Arizona. Hey, I'm from Arizona. And I have bad breakout reaction due to washing my face with water. What do I do? Oh no, I'm sorry. Hard water is difficult. Um. You know, that is one of those things, like with hard water, it's just, I hate recommending like bottled water because I am like, you know, I don't like the plastic, but I'm like, you can get like a big jug if you want and then like, um, you know, have it in like a little bottle or spray bottle or something and you can just like spray your face, wet it to be able to rinse and, you know, um, wet your face. Um, 
I've seen people do that before, but that's, that's a tricky one, honestly. I, I don't know the water in your area, and I'm not like an expert in any way on that, and so I just, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I would just say probably going with that would be the best thing to do. Let's see. Uh, so many questions. Oh my gosh, and this is freezing up. Let's see. Okay. Uh, trying to find one. Thoughts on Coco Kind? I think the majority of Coco Kind products are good. I think some of them have fragrance, but overall, I think they're a great company. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. There's so many questions. Do I recommend Avene? Avene, okay, I don't know if it's the same in Europe, but Avene is so expensive here. Like, I look at the ingredient list, I'm like, okay, this is like, you know, CeraVe level products, you know, it's the same type of quality. And then I look at the pricing and they're like 30, 40, 60, $70 for Avene products. I'm like, whoa, that is very expensive for, you know, like 60 bucks for a moisturizer. That's really expensive when it's very similar to CeraVe moisturizer. So I don't know. Avene, I do plan on doing a video sometime soon. I just have to finish trying out their products. But, you know, meh. Overall, I'm just kind of like, eh, about them. Moisturizer for dry, dehydrated skin. CRVA broke me out. Oh, no. You to the people with hyaluronic acid dry, dried me out. And oh, so simple as well. Love your channel. Wow. So you have very dry skin because those products are usually very good for dry skin. So I would say, um, oof. Um, Trying the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. Um, what else on top of that? Well, not on top of that. That one I usually recommend for people with very, very, very dry skin. I would also say if CeraVe broke you out and used to people and oh so simple, man, that's hard. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I would say go for products that have the shortest ingredient list possible because it sounds like you have very sensitive skin that has a lot of sensitivities to certain ingredients. So, and oh so simple is one of like the most simple products I've ever found. So just go for really short ingredient lists and find the most like rich creams possible um, because all of those are usually work really well for people with dry skin. Sorry about that. Eye serum with retinol recommendation. The Inky List Retinol Eye Cream. Besides that, just use your retinol face serum, dilute it in a little bit of face cream, and pat it on the under eye area. Because eye creams, a lot of times, are ripoffs. They're not necessary, and companies will charge so much money for an eye serum or an eye cream when it's literally just the, fa the same as a face serum. And companies will love to be like, oh, this eye cream or this eye serum is formulated to be able to specifically penetrate the under eye area because the face serum can't do this. There's absolutely no evidence to support that. Um, Dermatologists, um, chemists I know just use their face serums on their under eye area and I recommend you do the same. But the Inky List eye cream is good because it's super cheap but very effective. Let's see. I usually have very oily skin but lately it's suddenly very dry, flaky, and rough. I think it's a reaction to the Paul's Choice 2% BHA. Ooh, any suggestions? Yeah, so stop using that product. See how your skin recovers after you stop using that product for a little while. Um, sometimes you may have very oily skin because your skin is very dry and it's trying to overproduce oil to compensate for that. And so sometimes going in with a Paula's Choice is just making your skin even more dry, which causes a bunch of issues. So I would say stop using that product. Try using a skincare routine or a skincare product that's really moisturizing and see if your skin improves at all. Like overnight using a really hydrating moisturizer and see if your skin responds well because your skin may be dry and the Paula's Choice may just have pushed it over the edge, but it could be a sensitivity too. <gasps> Excuse me. I use a different gel and I want to know what chemical exfoliant precautions I should take or just general precautions. I wear sunscreen. Good. Um, so different, you know, is very good, but it can be very intense. I had a horrific reaction to it. Um, so just be very careful when you start using it with any retinoid. You always want to start using it once a week. Um, and then slowly work your way up to a maximum of three times per week. I don't recommend exfoliating at the same time as using your retinol. Technically you can do it, but I just don't recommend it because it can overly sensitize your skin and it's just risky. Um, if anything, alternating which, you know, days you use a, an exfoliant and a retinol, um, and don't exfoliate more than three times a week. Those would be my recommendations. Hopefully that helped. Whew, I'm getting tired. 
Lots of energy. More coffee. Hi, Hiram. Thank you so much for everything you do. I'm finally becoming confident about skincare. That's so awesome. <laughs> that makes me happy to hear. I wanted to ask your thoughts on Tula skincare. Yeah, so Tula, you know, their ingredient lists aren't bad. I just think they're a little expensive. I have tried multiple times going to the website. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy Tula. And then it's like, I'll try to get two products and it's already over $100. And I'm like, I mean... If they had incredible ingredient lists, I'd be like, hell yeah, but I haven't found anything from them yet where I'm like, wow, that is absolutely amazing. So I don't know. I just need to bite the bullet and just actually buy products and try them out. But in the meantime, I haven't found anything that I like find is justifies their price point. If I recently cleared my skin, I just have a few acne scars and I still get a few pimples, should I continue to use a salicylic acid cleanser? Ooh, good question. I personally recommend only using salicylic acid cleansers when you need to use them. If you don't need to use them anymore, then I would say just going in with a good cleanser for oily or breakout prone skin. Um, you the people one I love, the La Roche-Posay Tolerane cleanser, I love for that as well. Um, because salicylic acid is a great ingredient, but I, I think it should only be used like if you need it Like I only use salicylic acid when I need it um, Otherwise, it's just like I'm not going to use it because it's not necessary. So that's kind of what I would recommend um, to try instead Catherine says thank you for sharing your personal story. I'd be so proud if you were my son. Oh as a mom of three boys I'm grateful for people like you making safe spaces no matter what their sexual identity might be that is so kind. Thank you so much. Honestly, like whenever I hear that term, like um, I'm, I would be so proud if you were my son. I get a little like, <laughs> like try not to get choked up because that means so much, you know, as someone who, you know, I, and this sounds dramatic. I don't want to be dramatic, but it's like, I definitely was rejected, you know, by people who I thought were very close to me um, simply because of my, um, you know, my orientation. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it makes it difficult to not have, you know, those, people to be able to count on and so when I see people commenting like you it honestly makes me so happy because I'm just like wow you know even though sometimes it may be a little lonely there's people like that who are out there and people like you who are going to make the future so much better so that no one has to go through experiences like what I had to go through so thank you so much honestly that was very sweet of you What are your thoughts on Nordic brands like Foreo, Lumine, and Rudolph skincare products? Could you do a video on these sometimes? Yeah. So um, Foreo, I love. Lumine, some of their products are really good. Um, I just like it when they're fragrance-free. I can't remember if they're all fragrance-free or not fragrance-free, but I think Lumine is good. Rudolph, I'll have to look into because I'm not familiar with those ingredient lists, to be completely frank. I just purchased the Extra Strength Clear System from Paul's Choice, the Benzoyl Peroxide Cream. Would I use it as a serum or moisture step? Ooh, so I'd say probably moisture step. Just be very careful um, about like your pillowcases because it could bleach them. Um, but that line from them is really good. Um, I would just say use it, you know, when you need to. And I personally recommend using Benzoyl Peroxide as a spot treatment. But Paul's Choice is really good about their products. So um, yeah, I think, I think that's a great system. Hi, Aaron. Thank you for educating all of us about skincare. Of course. What are your thoughts about cleansing brushes? Too harsh. Greetings from Amsterdam. Ooh, I want to visit Amsterdam so someday. Um, so cleansing brushes, I think, are fine. Just make sure you're not going in with them too often. I don't recommend cleansing brushes every day. Like, I love the Clarisonic, but it is way too harsh to use every day, in my opinion. I think you need to be more gentle um, and use it, like, say, once or twice a week. But I think cleansing brushes are great. Would you ever consider doing consultations? This is something I get asked about all the time. And here's the thing, I just don't feel comfortable with that right now. Who knows? I mean, maybe it'll change in the future, but I don't really feel comfortable with that because I do believe that skincare knowledge should be accessible by everyone. And I, I don't like that, you know, certain skincare information can't be accessed, you know, um, by people in lower income ranges. And, and if I'm gonna, you know, go to, you know, if I'm going to be studying about a certain skin issue, I want to make sure that I can, you know, spread the information on a public platform. And also with consultations, I'm just, my mindset right now is just kind of like, I would recommend going to an esthetician or dermatologist if possible, because they, you know, have been, you know, the most licensed for their information that they receive, specifically dermatologists I most recommend. Um, let me know if you guys would be open to it. But right now I'm just kind of, I'm like, oh, you know, I rather, I kind of want to keep it public. I kind of want to keep it on YouTube, make sure as many people as possible get access to this information. Um, 
you know, people have asked like if I'm going to do like a Patreon, um, and I don't know. I just I I never want someone to feel excluded from information because of how much money they make. I grew up super, super, super poor. And the only information I really got access to was just stuff that I started looking up on the internet. So I learned to build websites, I built companies, I did a bunch of this stuff just by learning about it online. And uh, I've learned over time that like everyone, everyone deserves access to education. So that's just kind of my thought on um, consultations. We'll see how it changes in the future. Um, but that's what I feel like right now. Let's see. Thank you, Jess. Hi, Hiram, I love you, thank you. You're a blessing for my skin. I'm 23, my skin has glow, but it's not even. From close, you can see scars on my skin and it's a little sensitive. Help, please. Loads of love from India. Ooh, all the way from India, that's so cool. Oh my God, India is my dream place to visit one day. I was hoping to visit the end of this year. I don't know if that's still a possibility, we'll see, but I wanna go to India so bad, you have no idea. I legit almost considered moving there, um, but, Yes, so um, I would say niacinamide is definitely the best thing to go with because it is a brightening agent, but it's not going to be too, too harsh. But I know sometimes, um, you know, in um, climates where it's uh, it's a lot more sunny, and um, I, I'm not sure if you are Indian, but sometimes Indian people struggle with um, hyperpigmentation, um, darkness in their skin, because um, I, I just genetics. Um, and for that, I would usually recommend going in with a retinol um, because retinol is really great for brightening the skin, getting rid of that pigmentation, solving those issues, um, and getting rid of that scarring. So uh, the CRV has an awesome retinol. I, I don't know all the products that are available in India, but just look for retinol-based products um, for that. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. Oh, so many questions. I'm like, we only have three minutes left. I'm trying to figure out which questions to answer last. I'm seeing, I'm still seeing a lot of questions about acne scars. Just go watch my video about, um, you know, acne scars because there's so many different types and so many different recommendations recommendations I have depending on your personal skin type. So just go watch that video um, because I'll you will learn a lot more in that video than you will from this live stream. <laughs> mm, let's see, let's see. I bought the CRV Retinol Serum, how often should I use it? So if you're starting on retinol, use it once a week and work your way up to a maximum of three to four times a week at most and only use it at nighttime. I will be making a video soon though about how to use retinol. My thoughts on First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. Um, out of all the exfoliating pads I found on the market, they're probably the best, but I personally recommend an exfoliating um, serum or an exfoliating toner because you're not gonna be creating the waste that a pad creates, and they still have some citrus extracts, and I personally think those can be irritating to the face, um, so that's why I wouldn't recommend those. Um, but they're not bad. They're definitely not bad. They're one of the best out there. Lorena says, hey mijo, congrats on your success on TikTok and YouTube. It gives me such joy to see your message about the number of followers, subscribers. Oh, thank you for saying that. I honestly feel like I'm so annoying. Like whenever I say thank you for this many subscribers, because I don't want it to come off as me being like, oh, I hit this milestone. Congratulate me. That's definitely not at all. But it's like, I can't like hit these milestones and not say thank you. Like I have to say thank you. You guys are incredible. And you are, you know, making this happen. It means so much to me. And I feel like it would be rude for me to not address it. But at the same time, I feel like I'm being really annoying by like constantly saying like, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I don't want people to be like, oh my God, we get it. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Thank Thank you for that message, Lorena. Oh, thank you, Mia. You said you deserve it. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, I will answer two more questions. Thoughts on Freeman face masks? I am not a fan. No, no, no. They have a high concentration of denatured alcohol and polyvinyl alcohol, both of which are really stripping and overly sensitizing to the skin. Um, they're also peel-off face masks, and peel-off face masks are just like, they don't do anything. Like, they're really satisfying, but in terms of like actual benefits for the skin, they're not going to deliver good benefits. So I personally don't recommend them, but they are fun to use, but they just, they can be sensitizing to the face. Thoughts on Tamano oil. I love Tamano oil. I think it's amazing. One of my favorite products, the Great Barrier Relief from um, Crave Beauty. 
has a high concentration of tamano oil. It's great, it can brighten the skin, it hydrates it, it soothes sensitivity, redness, irritation. I think it's one of those ingredients that needs a lot more research, but I love. I just, I want them to research it more so that more companies can start using it because it's a really amazing um, oil. Hey Hiram, I bought the Cetaphil Gentle Foaming Cleanser and it broke me out really bad. Oh no, any cleanser suggestions for normal to dry skin? Yeah, so um, Cetaphil, their cleansers are not the best in my opinion. I personally recommend CeraVe as an alternative, but actually I would say the La Roche-Posay Tolerine Hydrating Cleanser, so, so good. If you have normal to dry skin, that cleanser is amazing because it really works well to deeply cleanse the skin, but it's not going to strip it. So, highly recommend that one. Um, and it's, it's still a good price point for a large bottle. Okay, one more, one more answer, one more answer. Let's see. I, uh, oh, okay, I am a tween with acne, what should I use? Go watch my um, teen acne videos. I've made two so far and more will be coming soon. I talk about like what you should use if you are struggling with acne and breakouts. And then also watch my video about um, uh, the best drugstore skincare because there's a lot of good recommendations that I make there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this live stream. If you haven't already, go follow me on TikTok. Just search Hiram or follow me on Instagram, Skincare by Hiram, if you want to connect with me even more and see more content. Otherwise, I will be uploading a video tomorrow that you guys will be able to see. Thank you guys so much for watching this live stream and for all of your support as well, all of your questions. Like I say in every single live stream, and I mean it with the same amount every time, it really means so much that you guys are trusting me with your skin and with advice like I know that skin is some people's biggest sensitivity and I know I would be very weary about who I you know trust in terms of skincare advice and it means so much that you guys trust me enough and I and I take that very very seriously and I always want to recommend the very best products for you so thank you guys so much for watching I'm hoping to do another live stream next week we will see because quarantine is still active here <laughs> so I will see you guys in the live stream next Friday go follow me on Instagram if you want to know what time it's going to be at and thank you guys so much for everything Mwah. bye guys